Hi, my name is Scott Johnston, co-founder of Uphill Athlete. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set your training zones using the aerobic threshold and the anaerobic threshold tests that you've hopefully conducted by now. Um, we'll be using my own uh, Training Peaks account. I'll be walking you through the, how I set up my zones. Uh, in an earlier video, I did walk people through how to do the uh, aerobic threshold heart rate drift test, and you can refer to that video if you have any uh, con confusions on that. Um, so let's get started. So here's what it looks like when you open your Training Peaks account and you've got the calendar open. Um, in order to set your zones, you need to go over here on the left hand side. You can see this little gear wheel next to my name. Um, click on that, it takes you into your settings. Down on the left over here, again, where you see my cursor, zones, you click on that. And um, now we've got these uh, zones that I've set for myself. But it's quite likely that you're going to see something a little different when you come in here. You may look at, you may see something that's a little more confusing to you. It might look like this. So I'm going to show you here, just picking one out, let's say that one. And it, because Training Peaks may have auto populated a uh, zone system for you based on what little information it has on you. Um, so I'm going to show you, we're not going to use that, but I'm going to tell you why I don't think that's a very good idea. First of all, there's no, there's, they don't know anything about you. There's Training Peaks knows nothing about your own physiology. Um, it's got some zones like this one, you notice 5A, where there's only three beats um, for that whole zone. That'd be very difficult in real life to con to sustain a, uh, something that close during a normal workout. Notice this one up in aerobic capacity, it's almost 100 beats across. So I find this stuff is pretty unhelpful. So I just want to get rid of, if they've set you up like that, then you just want to get rid of it. Um, and then, but you may have find yourself looking at a page that looks a little more like this, although it may it won't probably have just four zones. They will have it probably a, a standard way they set it up is with f at least five zones. Um, but I like to parse it down to just four zones. And I'll explain what those zones uh, mean and how they work. Um, this easy zone one, it could be used for recovery and a very or very easy days. Zone two is where we build aerobic capacity. Zone three is where we work on anaerobic capacity. So we would call this the anaerobic threshold zone. Um, and then the, the hardest or zone four would be what we call aerobic power zone. And the, the key things that you're going to bring into this from your tests are the top of zone two, which you determine during your aerobic threshold um, test, which in my case I know is about 135. And you are going to be bringing into this also from your anaerobic threshold, the top of zone three, which in my case is in the you know, mid 143s, could be 143 to 145, something like that. So once, I've, once you've entered these two numbers, then you've got the whole system anchored. And what I would normally do at this point is to take about 10% off of this number here and call that the bottom of this zone. What, so what's that, about one, I don't know, 122 or something like that. We could just say that. Um, and then the top of zone one automatically becomes, you know, just under that or 121. The top, the bottom of zone one is much less distinct. It doesn't have a real physiological marker to it. So once again, you could feel pretty, I'd feel pretty confident saying, you know, somewhere in the 10 to 15% range would be set the bottom of zone one, 10 to 15% off of the top of zone one. Um, likewise, we move up here to zone three. We can set the bottom of zone three at just at above the top of zone two and do the same thing for zone four. Um, so in this case, it's 144 up to, in this in my case, it's about 162. And once you've done that, the only other piece of kind of critical information that's really important, I don't, max heart rate does not factor into any of their um, calculations for training stress score. Um, resting heart rate doesn't either. But this one right here, the threshold heart rate is something that's important. So you want to enter the number you got when you did your anaerobic threshold test. Well, so when, when Training Peaks talks threshold, they mean anaerobic threshold. And this is an important number to have in your Training Peaks account 
because that is where training peaks, the training stress score is calculated from, just that one number. So that's a pretty important number to have. And once you've got that all set up like this, you can just go down here to click and save. And from then on, all of your workouts will be graded and training stress scores allocated to them based on these, uh, these zones that you've set up. So I click that button takes us back to the uh, calendar page and your base you're all done so hopefully that was helpful and I look forward to um, talking to you soon with another video